Hey, thanks everyone for joining us here. We are joined by Penn State head coach Guy Godowski following Penn State's five to four overtime victory against Arizona State here on Sunday afternoon. Penn State held the 45-40 edge and shots on goal. We're one for two with the man advantage as Arizona State was one for three with the man advantage. Um, tonight's three goal comeback for the Nittany Lions ties the program record for largest comeback in a victory. Uh, last time that they did that was January 23rd, 2015 against Northern Michigan, also a 5-4 victory. Head coach Guy Godowski, opening statement. Well, I, di I didn't know that. That's a, that's a long time, and, and it certainly was a great win considering how we started. And I give the guys a lot of credit for coming back, and especially Liam Solier, who we left hanging out to dry in the first period several times. And I don't think you can really fault him on any of the goals. Um, there was several breakaways and a power play goal and uh, and we were down three nothing four one and uh, for him to I mean he showed a lot of mental toughness to come back and he looked so composed uh, the third period and uh, really happy for him that the guys found a way to get it done and that really was that was quite a win. Just a reminder if you do have a question for Guy please use the raise hand feature I'll ask you to unmute and then you can ask Guy your question. Zach Lambert. Uh, hey, coach, congrats on the win. Um, so obviously you guys started the season 0-5 and, and then you were down big today. What can you say about your team and how they're able to kind of battle back from being down in deficits? Well, it, it, for this tonight, I, I, I truly, I give them, as I said, a lot of credit and, and especially Liam uh, for how we came back after such a poor start. And, and Liam specifically, like I said, because we really – we gave him zero help. And, uh, and so for him to come back and play so composed in the third period, make the big stops that he did. And for the team to find a way down three, nothing down four, one to come back and win. I mean, really, you've got to, that that's a big win for, for this group. It really is. And uh, it's got to make them feel pretty good going into break. And Jones. Guy, I'm curious, looking forward in terms of what you guys are going to do for the next couple of weeks, what is that process sort of like? Because this break is obviously not quite the same as, as normal. Yeah, um, well, there's not, not everybody gets to go home. Um, uh, so they, you know, Cam Davidson spoke to them, obviously, about trying to, it's a different situation for everybody, but about what they can do and where they are. Um, certainly, Justin Rogers also spoke to them about um, the importance of maintaining all the protocols that we've been following. I mean, they've done a great job, Ben. Like they've they've done a great job um, staying as safe as possible, and and our results were pretty good. And I think it's so. The talk was to try maintain everything we're doing at home and enjoy. If you're one of the the guys that are fortunate enough to spend some time with family, enjoy it and do it safely. Um, but I think maybe where you're leading is that, yeah, when we come back, I think there's there's protocols that have to happen in terms of timing and testing and things like that, that um, quite honestly, and I don't have down. So I'd rather not say because I don't want to say something wrong. But I know Justin Rogers will will know exactly. Chris has. Hey, coach, just out of curiosity for you specifically, how does this win feel and just going up what do you think you learned about your team in this one too i mean it it look it, when you're down three nothing down four one and you come back and win i gotta tell you it feels good uh it was a big win for these guys i really i felt for them you know for all the things that they've been going through you know and it just it's such a different year and it's nice to see that happen. Um, that was very nice. Um, what we learned about the team is that we have a long way to go in terms of our concepts playing together. Um, you know, we, we don't look like a very well coached team right now. I'll be honest. Uh, certainly you look at that first period and, and we don't have a lot of cohesiveness in terms of our philosophy of how we play. That's for sure. But at the same time, we also learned that those guys have a lot of guts. Um, and it's certainly a lot of fight back, and I give them a ton of credit for that. David Eckert. Hi, Guy. Um, can, can this type of thing be, be a, a jumping off point for, for Liam? Um, I know, you know, the, the playing time situation there isn't totally defined yet, but I'm just wondering, you know, what th this type of game, as you kind of mentioned, you know, having the tough start, bouncing back, can do for a freshman goalie mentally. He 
I, I think it should do a, a lot for them. I mean, and the one thing about this weekend, not just tonight, but I, I thought we, you know, we, we had excellent goaltending throughout. I mean, we did. Uh, and that is really nice to see. I don't think, I think coming back from the Wisconsin weekend, I think, uh, you know, we all knew that we had to get a lot better in that area. And I, I think this weekend um, especially was, uh, was back to back really, really good games from those two. So it, it's got to give not only him the question you asked confidence, but I think the team as well. Frank Marzano. Hey coach, congrats on the win. Um, can you walk through what you said to your team when you, when you took that first time out after uh, Sun Devils scored their third goal? Well, it was, it wasn't, you know, they, they scored three quick ones, obviously. And um, we just wanted to settle down. And I don't think, I don't think it was a matter of, Hey, do we, do we pull Liam because, we left him hanging out to dry. Like it wasn't about Liam, but if we did that, it would have been a shake up the team. But the, 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 the message was just to get back to playing our game, a reminder of the concepts that we have to do together. We don't have to do anything fancy. We just have to do our game better. And, uh, and I think, you know, it's nice to see. Uh, I, I think we, I, I think we achieved that. Ben Jones. You guys have sometimes struggled coming out of break to kind of find the momentum that you had in the first half of the year when you don't start as well as you want to and then begin to find that momentum. Is there kind of a hope that maybe when you reverse that trend a little bit, maybe you come back out of break with a different kind of feel than maybe you've had in years past? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think this is going to be a, a very different feel regardless uh, coming back. Um, yeah, I mean, I you're right about that. We have, I think, last year was better uh, than, but typically, you're absolutely correct. We have struggled with that, um, and maybe because this is such a different start and such a different year, maybe, you know what? Maybe that's what we need to uh, to have a better start after Christmas. But I hope so. Yeah, I, I hope you're right, Ben. Zach Lambert, uh, can you talk about what that goal at the end meant for Connor? You know what? I mean, he, that's not his first OT goal. I mean, he scored the biggest overtime goal last year um, for, for us. And, and I mean, he's just that kind of guy. It's interesting guys that score OT goals like that. They're often guys that play for the team. And, and that's certainly him. He's an extremely reliable player that comes up big in big times. And that's exactly what you saw. So I don't think, I think that's right along a line with who he is. I don't think that's going to make him change in any way because I think that's who he is. Um, I don't think anybody on our, if you talk to the returning players or our staff, I don't think anyone was surprised that he would, he would get a, a big goal like that. David Eckert. What have you made of, you know, your series is with, series with Arizona state, you know, as a whole, sorry, my dog is trying to break into my room. Um, <laughs> at, kind of as a whole, uh, what are what are these games like for you? Because they're really entertaining to watch. So I'm just. Wondering. I mean, I I really I, I think everybody in our program has to have have gained. I mean, we had a lot of respect for Ohio, for Arizona State with what and how they play, what they've been. Or sorry, with what they've done. But I think we all gained uh, more respect for them with how they play. I mean, they, they come at you hard and they they fight. And I think they're. I really like the way they play. They're in. They're not only a very good team, obviously, they're very entertaining to watch and they play up and down and they play fast. And I thought the, the entire weekend was, as you might have just mentioned, extremely not only entertaining, but real fast, good hockey. And so I, I we obviously had a lot of respect for them as a program. I think we have even more respect for them now with how they play the game. Frank Marzano. Uh, has the Big Ten communicated uh, anything uh, to you or the rest of the coaches about uh, phase two of the schedule, or is it more just a waiting game to see when they're going to announce it? Yeah, we, we haven't got anything yet. Acacia Broder. Hey, Guy. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. I apologize if this was asked before. I just came in a little late. Um, but do you think the upcoming break will affect the team in any way? Do you think it'll be beneficial for them to kind of, you know, reflect on you know phase one or do you think it might create difficulties you know being separated from the team for a little bit well the reason why i think it will be beneficial is because there's been obviously when they got here there's a lot of this was very different they didn't get to spend much time 
with their teammates. They, they were in, in, for example, the freshmen were just with the freshmen for so long. They have done very minimal socializing with each other. And it's been a very, I think, mentally challenging time for them from the time they got to campus to now. And, and I really feel that, you know, maybe we, we all can use a mental break. Not all of them are fortunate enough to be able to go home uh, for the holidays. Um, but I still think maybe just to get a little bit of a mental break will be beneficial. So in that sense, I do think it's going to, we could benefit from a hockey standpoint alone. I thought we we're, we're starting to play better. Obviously we, we sort of, you know, we, we coached very little compared to what we had to do to start the year compared to the past. So we're sort of, we're started now trying to get some momentum. So maybe hockey, hockey wise, no, but in terms of mental, just, just mental relief. I think it is good. It's good timing. Last call for questions for Guy. Acacia Broder, final question. Yes, my last question for you is, um, what do you think are the big takeaways for you after phase one? And what will you kind of, you know, use what you learned in this, you know, last month or so going forward? Yeah, well, I, I hope a lot of what we learned as a program, I hope we'll never have to use again because a lot of it we would have done, I think, things differently in terms of teaching. Um, I think that, you know, we learned lessons there. I give all the teachers out there a ton of credit for those that have figured out innovative and effective ways to communicate and educate on Zoom. I, I really do. So a lot of what we learned, hopefully, we'll never have to learn again. But from a team standpoint, um, I mean, you know, you, I think we learned there's no substitute for, for leadership examples. That's what I think we learned. Like, I, I think a lot of what goes on preseason and early in the year with, with the new players in terms of their interaction with the upperclassmen and the leaders is invaluable, not only on the ice, but how to navigate through campus and what, what our values are. I mean, I, I really think that that's one thing we learned is that when you have great, lead, really good leadership and you have a really good culture, that is the most important thing to transferring those values and education, I guess, to the new players. It's not what the coaching staff says. It's all about the culture and what the leaders do. That's, that's one big takeaway from this half. I really appreciate the time. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Um, hey, I want to say happy holidays to all of you too. I mean, it's not everybody's been, uh, it's been weird for everybody. And I, I really hope you have a great holiday. Thank you very much.